morning and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, curl 7.65.0 release time um, I actually prepared a few things before I started the stream because I didn't want to mess it up um, uh, well I don't want to mess it I didn't want to mess it up live so I did actually package everything up and pushed it on both the source repo and the web repo and I've updated things so right now the website actually shows um, 7.65.0 since a few minutes back it says zero of the up of the listed downloads are of the latest versions because it's just been uploaded there so no nobody has created any um, packaged versions with this yet so if we tr press the download link we can see that the download links are correct for the new version mm, what else well the change log is also updated uh, here is the list of things that are changed in this release and interesting enough there's also well you can also go like this to the security page because it lists two new security problems we figured out or got reported in this release but I'm going to do like this I have a pending blog post about this release um, and I'll I'm gonna do this I'm gonna just push that blog post and then I'm going to talk you through it and um, sure do uh, do um, interrupt if you have questions or whatever um, so uh, bring them on in, in the twitch chat I think I'll notice somewhere um, so okay I'm gonna go over to my little blog post that you can't see here because it's in another browser and I just pushed publish on that and I'm going to make sure where am I yeah uh, and then I'm going to go to a new tab go to my blog there look at that beam that's the URL I'm gonna paste it in the chat so that's the URL 7.65.0 it is actually, I would say, uh, an ordinary release in many aspects, isn't that it's um, mostly a bunch of bug fixes? Uh, well, so start from the beginning then. Um, eight weeks since the previous release. We do releases ideally every eight weeks. Sometimes we move them a little bit to just so that if in, in case they collide with my travels or with big holidays like Christmas and stuff so but uh, typically we stick to eight weeks because then we can do we in, in merge features for four weeks and we do bug fixes for four weeks and then we start over and so release uh, changes bug fixes release changes bug fixes release oh one eight week cycles and this now ended uh, one cycle funny enough we managed to um, we managed to reduce the number of, of lines of code in this release it's actually 500 lines less in the lib directory which I think is awesome because you know we tend to just grow and grow and grow and grow over time but it's good to to actually sometimes make sure that we can reduce a little bit as well so um, I mentioned here in the blog post a few other things that happened in the project since the previous release in, in, in these two months so we introduced the bounty program the by bounty program and I'll get back to that we had the curl up meeting in Prague uh, yeah it feels like ages ago but it was after the previous release I've launched a tiny curl effort. We've, we're running a survey, uh, the curl survey right now. If you're using curl, help us out with the survey. And we've uh, introduced new sponsors to the project. <coughs> so 
This is release 181, counted from the beginning. Uh, we've been doing this project for 7,733 days, um, which is quite a long time. No, where's it? what is it doing? Sorry. Sometimes the streaming program loses track of the browser it's supposed to show. But okay, here it is. Okay, so um, we count 119 bug fixes in this release. And this sometimes people ask me about the how can I first how can we keep on fixing so many bugs and secondly how can how come I'm so happy with the number of bug fixes that we make well first of course um, first of course we make a lot of um, bug fixes simply because we have bugs so we change things all the time and uh, when we change things we introduce bugs and I'm very liberal in counting bugs because um, even updates to documentation and, and spelling fixes and stuff like that are counted as bugs so yeah we have a lot of bugs bug fixes pretty much all the time we're maybe not we, maybe we're not at the rate of 119 in every release but somewhere around this it goes up and down a little bit so i'm counting the number of bug fixes we've done in total since i started counting which was almost from the beginning so 5,148 bugs, bug fixes in total, which is a ridiculous number. Um, 215 commits. Well, that's also a little bit more than average. So 56 days, 215 commits, for a little bit more than four commits per day. Well, a little bit less, but okay, about four. So we didn't add any libcore function. We added a set opt option, and I'll tell you about that. So, uh, and what's I what I think is is cool about this release and and uh, continuously going forward is that we managed to have 50 contributors to this release. That is, individuals who have helped out, you know, with bug reports, patches, advice, uh, spelling fixes, or or other, you know, helping out someone with a name that helped us out. And 24 of those were new. So, we maybe. 21 years old, but we still had 24 new contributors only in this last eight week period. And out of the 32 people who actually authored code or authored uh, patches that were, that, were, that were merged into Git, 12 of them were new. And I think that is also awesome. So we're now at a total of 681 code authors and 1953 contributors. Awesome numbers. <clears throat> so, we also paid uh, bug bounties for the first time in our new bug bounty program. But, but uh, let me first just uh, touch on the news that we have in this release. Um, we're introducing, well, we're removing two things that we have uh, previously announced since a good while that we, are, that we were going to do. So, we removed support for global DNS cache. And uh, a global DNS cache, because it doesn't have any locking, so a global DNS cache is really crap. You, it it's really assumes that you're using a, uh, basically a single thread, one at a time, and so you can use you can keep the cache global between invokes of, of the functions, which with discouraged use of that, I think for the last 15 years or so in, in the documentation, so basically said, don't use this, don't use this, we have another way of doing it. Um, so and we've now had it um, marked as deprecated and and for removal for six months and now we finally took the step to actually remove the support so there's an option that says i want to use a global dns cache and you can still set that option it just won't do anything so old programs will still remain functional they'll just say i want to use a global dns cache but it won't it'll just then um, run slower since it'll it won't have that cache there's a better way to share cache, DNS cache between different curl invokes. And, and uh, this link here takes you to my post about it and also explains how you can do it much better and sort of forward going way. 
we also removed com the HTTP pipelining support completely now. We removed all the final pieces of code to do it. And that is an explanation why, I think that is the biggest explanation why we reduced the number of code, uh, lines of code in this release. Pipelining is complicated and uh, I, I think it made our code easier to read and nicer to handle and everything when we removed that code. It's been a little bit controversial that we're removing HTTP pipelining because some people think it's uh, it works and they're using it and they're happy with it. But um, there's just too many bugs and uh, too fragile of a feature, I think, to keep it in there. I motivated it many times, <coughs> I think. But okay, we introduced a new option as well. So these are the three things, changes we did in this release, uh, really. We deprecated two things and we added one option called max age con, which is the maximum age for a connection to be considered for reuse when um, when found in the connection cache or connection pool. You know, if you do one request and you do another request later on and that first request has a live connection, it'll be kept by curl in the connection cache. So when you do a second request later, it'll say, oh, see that, oh, there's a, an existing open connection to that same host, let's reuse that connection. And this now sets a, um, a lifetime, a maximum lifetime for that connection. Only try to reuse that connection if it's newer than blah, blah, blah seconds. Which, of course, is um, only, it is, I introduced this option mostly because it turns out that Reusing connections after a certain time is usually uh, never works really, basically. So it'll only introduce problems and make it more slow because you have to, you know, if you get a connection at one hour later and you try to reuse it, you can be almost be sure that the server, either the server has closed it and we haven't noticed, or there's a NAT somewhere that has closed the connection due to, to the idleness and everything. So. <coughs> we actually avoid some of the problems by just not trying to use the connection again if it's too old. So then it'll instead get discarded and a new one will be created. So it might feel a bit wrong, but it's actually usually better for, for the for curl and for the application to be more sure that the connection will work when we use it. And a reuse connection actually, a connection is awesome for reuse immediately after it has been re reused and it actually degrades really fast so after a few minutes it's basically no point in having it around anymore because it won't be able to get reused anyway in, in a modern network situation <coughs> so i have another blog post that i'm going to post later today because i don't want to post them immediately on top of each other but um it basically says that today is um, the one month anniversary of the new bug bounty program in the curl project. We, we had had bug bounty programs before, but this is the new one, the current one that we have in, in the, together with Hacker One, and it has been a rather big success, I would say, since we've we launched it exactly on April 22nd and it's May 22nd today. So one one month ago and we launched it and we had a bunch of reports. Most of the reports of course being uh, not security problems we cared about or mostly not problems at all and then problems we didn't care about and then a few these two that were actual security vulnerabilities. I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more about that in my separate blog post, but th these two vulnerabilities that we announced today, and we show them here, and uh, they were both reported in the bug bounty program. They both got a reward each, one 150 USD and the other one 200 USD. So we paid 350 USD this month for, for the bug bounty pro in the bug bounty program for these um, vulnerabilities. The first one, is uh, w again a stupid uh, integer overflow thing. So if you manage, if you run a 32-bit architecture and you use one of these APIs, well, the, in this case, the URL parser API, 
and you pass in a string that is longer than two gigabytes, it can uh, wrap a counter and you can, it might allocate a too small buffer and it'll, it might overrun heap memory. But it's very unlikely that you actually pass in a two gigabyte string on a 32 gigabyte architecture anyway. So it's, um, yeah, it is a problem. And, and I'm sure there might be applications where this can actually be exploited, but still feels like a stretch and shouldn't happen to many applications. That, that would greatly surprise me. And the other flaw, which is actually, I would say they got a slightly bigger reward. It is a TFTP problem. So TFTP, not the most used protocol with curl, trivial file transfer protocol. Um, what can somebody say about that? So, so well, TFTP it is a UDP based protocol and it's, uh, it is trivial and it sends blocks of data and you can actually um, sort of negotiate a block size with the server you say I'm I, I'd like to talk with block size of this number and the default is 512 and it was the block size thing was introduced so that you could do bigger block sizes and therefore get bigger support for bigger files and I think faster transfers um, <clears throat> but it turns out that if you reduce the block size well the BLK size so BLK size this is called in tftp lingo if you reduce it you can actually trick curl curl would actually use the default size in one of the receives and not the actual size so if you would reduce the size it would pass in a pointer to a too small buffer and it would overrun the buffer the heap based buffer and it would override it by with data that it reads from the server um, and of course that's ugly and bad and um, again a problem CV, CVE 2019 54 36 I'll post a separate um, email announcement about that and um, well you can also just click on that link because the security advisor is already up and explains it in some more detail <coughs> it's actually very rare that you use block size smaller than 512 because it doesn't make any sense usually M very few people use tftp over the network Th they usually use it with some uh, near you know on network server and everything so it's not likely to actually hurt anyone bad but it's a security problem someone might get hurt so both of these security problems rated low because they're fairly limited in in their scopes okay and in the release log that i that is generated uh, we can see that this release well i also mentioned it up here it says 119 bug fixes because that's what we the fixes that are marked as bugs and counted by my scripts counts it counts 119 bug fixes and that's a lot of bug fixes most of them of course trivial and not that interesting to talk about since yeah we fixed some yeah you know unused variable in uh, the examples and whatever fixes yes but we don't need to talk about them They're, they just polished everything so i just wanted to highlight some of the fixes we've done so uh, i call them my favorite fix because these are some of the more i don't know bug fixes that are worth mentioning and, and maybe think about and maybe talk about and as they might actually get noticed by people or and, and you might um, appreciate them so for example we now mark connections as for close when we get a close notify from in the TLS layer when we used OpenSSL at least. OpenSSL is the by far most used TLS backend. So basically the, f the vast majority of users are using OpenSSL. Uh, but okay, we support a lot of others too. And you know, there's a, a signaling going on on the TLS layer, which is done on top of TCP. And usually we don't care about that signaling really 
because we don't have to but it turns out that, that occasionally when when the connection is closed seemingly prematurely it, it it makes sense to know if the tls layer has closed it or not or been told about it going down and this is how it's been it's been it gets told the close notify message in tls so if we receive close message close notify message we mark the connection for close and then just handle the closure better when that happens um, just a nicer behavior and makes it less mysterious to users one tiny little thing i did was that i added the port number in the trying blah 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 message in in the verbose output for, for curl i don't know if you m thought about it but when you do curl and the host name blah 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 and you do dash v to see the verbose output you'll see that it says trying in, in the verbose message which is when it initiate the tcp well basically when it initiate the connection starts trying to connect it can take a long while so you, sometimes you see that trying and it takes a while until it says something else now it also adds the port number there because i was debugging stuff and i was a bit annoyed that i didn't immediately see which port number we were talking about so that message will now use the port number as well i <coughs> had this pro they're in a funny order but but i realized that um we in curl we basically support unlimited we used to support basically unlimited uh, string length for whatever parameter you pass to it so if you pass a string to curl you there's rarely any string limit you just pass whatever string you want and that goes for usernames and passwords as well sure pass in however long you want them to be. And then I realized that someone reported a bug that SOX5, that's a proxy protocol. So if you use SOX5 with authentication, which you can, it uses credentials. So you basically pass on username and password. The protocol itself limits those to 255. Yeah, it uses bytes for the length. So it, 255 is the max length you can set for username at 255 for password and so i had to add that length check for socks 5 and when i did that it re i realized that we we really didn't have any good socks test suite set up test so i couldn't really test this in a good way because previously before this release we only used ssh itself to test socks basically ran SSH with the dash capital D option to set up a SOX proxy itself and then run things over that and make sure that stuff works. But uh, uh, sure, that wasn't bad, but it, it was um, hard to test, you know, negative tests. What happens if you send broken stuff or what happens if the server responds with crap? So how, how do we deal with that? So it wasn't really good. So I wrote a new test server for it instead basically implemented a really stupid SOX proxy server myself um, which is really hard uh, re it's not really hard it's very easy because SOX and bo both SOX4 and SOX5 are very simple and basic protocols uh, just a few bytes of data in the begin uh, in the setup and with this new test server there's also it also uses our regular message format which allows a test case to ask for specific behavior from the server and the server will then <laughs> act accordingly so basically we can set up a, a language that says ask the server to go nuts or cut the connection or be very slow or or just send back crap when we want to talk to it and and in that way to make sure that the curl implementation works fine with all that um right and i did that a while ago it seems to be working pretty good it also increases the um, test coverage of this of um of the tests then because the, it removes the dependency on ss on the ssh client to run sox tests so now even on old legacy things and on uh, windows and everything it becomes slightly easier to run the sox tests so 
hopefully more platforms and we get more test coverage of SOX. And I added a few more than a few new SOX tests that we didn't have before that we couldn't test before with the previous setup. Like for example, this username length uh, thing. Going forward, a, r a common sign of a problem with a curl setup is that, well, you know, people download curl, they build it, they install it, they run it, and then they have a problem. And we have over time realized that in many cases that happens because, well, I wouldn't say, sorry. Uh, in many cases, we notice that people, when they have this problem, rarely notice in this case when they have one version of the curl tool and another version of the library. And while that is perfectly permissible, you can do that because they're, they're independent enough to not have to be the same version. Since they come in the same um, source code package, you build them and install them at the same time, it is usually a sign that something is really wrong with the setup. Usually it has with paths to do or, or um, the linker setup path. Or, so, so which version it finds or what. And usually people have more than one version installed and blah, blah, blah. So now, starting now, we have a little warning that says, oops, I found a different version of the library than the command line tool version you're using you might want to check that out, sort of thing. That'll be interesting to see if it helps or if it, uh, it'll be annoying for the users. <clears throat> so let me know if it helps or breaks your um, situation, your case. Another little thing, just recently, I figured out that, okay, so, we have a custom command line parser in, in curl. It doesn't use any get opt or anything, so I wrote it myself a long time ago. It is both good and bad. Uh, in this case, we have a generic handling. If you know, if you can set, you know, you can set, ask curl to do something with an option, and we have different kind of options really. Options that take, that are just a single flag. There are booleans. Then there are options that take string arguments and there are options to take numbers. Uh, simplified, easy speaking, sort of. And the, if you use one of those booleans like the dash dash compressed, you ask curl to enable compression. And then there you can also use the longer version, which then you just prepend dash dash no dash before it to turn it around to make it a negative. So. I do not want compression, like dash dash no dash compression. Um, that is pretty good because it makes all those no things handled generically with a, by the parser. So everything that is Boolean supports, you enable it with a flag and you set the dash dash no dash in front of it, then you disable it on and off in a generic way. That's That's pretty neat, I think. It works. So, and it's been like that for a long time, but, but now someone figured out that, I don't remember, I, I'm, I hope and I think I credited the person in the, in the patch when I fixed it. Um, so this dash dash no dash treatment is done independently of what kind of command line option it is. It doesn't have to be it didn't have to be a, a boolean option. So, for example, in in the case the the reporter used, he used the option dash dash proxy, which sets you know the proxy string to use when you connect to a proxy, and and he figured out that you can also use dash dash no dash proxy. But that was for a string option, and the no prefix it has no meaning for the string options. So. So you could use dash dash no proxy and a string and it would use that proxy the same way as if you would use the regular dash dash proxy option, which was just confusing. Not to mention that we have another option that is called no proxy without any dash in the middle, just written together. So 
it was really confusing and and now i actually turned it into um an error if you try to use dash dash no dash in that style of of uh, writing command line options if you try to use that and it isn't a boolean option you'll get a, an error because we don't that that's not that's a mistake you're not supposed to do that it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't do anything I think over time I've learned that um, it's better to be more strict about these things than being lenient and, and, and sort of, you know, let things go mentality. So now, now write exactly what it's supposed to be. And, and if it's not a, a documented functionality for it, it's an error. I think, I think this was a really, I mean, I don't think people actually do this very often so we'll see about that what, how, how that goes um, <clears throat> other fun things I obviously don't know how URLs work so when we introduced the URL API in 7.62.0 that's um, I think it's about I think we did it in August, so not too long ago. August 2018. So I introduced a bunch of regressions in. I introduced the URL API to curl so that we could offer URL parsing to applications and we would use the same URL parsing functions and algorithms internally so there wouldn't be any discrepancy from. So applications and curl would use the same that that's a security precaution basically so it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't leave any dark corners where where applications and libcurl would behave differently if they would use our parser so i, I think it was a, a great um, i think it's great and but it, in doing so i um, i accidentally did bunch of re regressions and we already fixed a few of them in previous releases and now it was time again and to mention some of them that I mentioned here in my blog post first possibly the m the most annoying one or the one that keeps haunting us and it's like a curse is the zone ID thing which is the scope you can add to an IPv6 numerical address uh, in a URL. I, I'm sure I show an example here in the, in the blog post. Here, look at that. It is basically the IPv6 address and then percent 25 and then there's a scope here. Where is that address? Um, I broke it. And it hasn't been working and we've fixed it partially uh, a few times and now I fixed it partially again no um, I'm not sure I fixed it partially but I think I actually fixed it properly at least for this case so uh, and so now I added support for for this to the URL parser as, as well so that someone can actually ask for this URL to get parsed and you can extract this the little um, zone ID out of this string using the URL API, which uh, so of course you should always had been able to do that because it's not really part of the ho host. It's not really the host name, right? And I didn't want to export it as part of the host name and let the caller have to know that you should find the percent %25 in there and extract it because if you're using the curl the URL API you you rather not want to know about the URL format at all you just ask the API to to deal with the formatting and how to find out stuff about it okay so i fixed that so now can you actually extract that part and you can set it and by default the API the parser will remove it from host names when it's there so if you extract just the host name you'll get the host name without that little part in it uh, which is awesome and 
we can actually nowadays now we also even use that little part in curl properly we it worked before 7.62.0 and now I think we brought back the functionality hopefully as it's supposed to be done this is IPv6 with a numerical IP address it's not extremely commonly used but it still happens I personally n never use it so I guess it never hurts me exactly but still um, and what else since we have the URL, the URL parser in curl I also took the opportunity because when working with this zone ID thing it, it's, it, I noticed that um, we parsed it from the uh, proxy string in a different way because it, the proxy string we handle differently than the regular URL string in a way where we didn't really have to because we treat the proxy string as a URL in all practical senses. So the, the good part about that is that I could switch the, uh, the proxy string parsing over to use the URL parser and then we got a lot of things for free such as handling the zone ID for proxies and everything. It's not quite fixed, the zone ID thing for proxies. I have more pending bugs, um, bug fixes for that. So it'll be f fixed more or better in the next release, but still. Okay, so you're hearing a lot of URL parser thing. I also noticed, I, I, I don't mention it here, but I fixed it that we actually allowed a URL to get parsed without, with a zero length host name, which um, of course can't really be, Th that's not really good. So that's a lot of um, URL API fixes. Oh, all right, and and uh, the final fix that I just did the other day, I think the final fix to the URL API for this time around, at least. I'm sure that's not the last fix for the, for the parser. It's funny how a URL parser can be so uh, riddled with tiny, tiny obscure things. The good thing is that I'm adding test cases for all of these new gotcha so hopefully over time the code is better the tests are better and yeah uh, well <coughs> turns out that well you know I introduced the curl API to them primarily parse strings that you pass to curl which is you have to parse URLs that curl supports right so, so basically a matter of parsing those schemes or protocols that curl already supports those 23 protocols so i um, made sure that it can do that and i added a maximum scheme length that the parser accepts based on that notion the longest scheme name that curl supports is seven bytes i think or six bytes Gopher. Yeah, I think that's the longest. Tell net. Uh, oh, six bytes. Okay, so I made the maximum scheme length that it, the URL supports set to eight bytes. I I can accept a little bit more because, uh, sure, I just want to parse our own protocols. And I didn't really think about the case where you can actually ask the parser to parse, accept any scheme name even if we don't support it which is handy because then you can use the parser to parse basically whatever url scheme or whatever url whatever protocol whatever scheme you want and then of course eight bytes is very short turns out that there are schemes that are very very much longer than eight bytes so i did a little uh, check and among the registered uri schemes that i a n a keeps a record of there's a link here if you want to see all the I can click it so here's a list of all the registered URI schemes and here you can see some here is the longest one the Microsoft dot Windows dot camera dot multi picker 
This is the longest currently registered one. I wonder if there's a date on this registration. No. Uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, um, 36 bytes. So in order for the curl URL parser to support the lo the, the currently longest registered URI scheme, <laughs> I bounced the maximum limit in the parser to 40 bytes. So sure, you can invent longer URI schemes and it might, I mean, the parser doesn't necessarily have to parse registered schemes, but anyway, I had to have put the limit somewhere and I think 40 bytes seemed okay. I think you should really reconsider things if you have longer scheme names than that. But okay, that's at least much better than eight bytes. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I sort of, like that if you look at the list of um i mean some of the schemes are really silly right com event bright attendee but I, I find it interesting that among all these registered schemes i mean do you see company names among these schemes no 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 yes 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 and that's only company name that appears in all those <laughs> schemes. There's only one. Well, there are here's an, well, Mongo is another company, but okay, it's at least short. So, so among those longest ones, those are all Microsoft ones, and they the using the company name in the URI scheme. I find it hilariously uh, unnecessary and annoying. And yeah, they're really, really long. And in this case, it's interesting too, since nowadays dot .camera is a t uh, top level domain, so nowadays they actually have a scheme with a name that is actually in itself a fully uh, qualified domain name, which, uh, <laughs> which is interesting. I, I don't think it matters really, uh, uh, but still the case. I, I, we noticed because when I pasted this I actually pasted this, the longest one on in Twitter, and Twitter would actually redo this part as a link then, because that's the link with a valid top-level domain. Oh, okay, just for for information. So now you can parse such URLs. I've never, I actually Googled to see if I could find any such URLs in the wild somewhere, but I didn't find anything. So I think a lot of those, um, a lot of those URI schemes are basic, are pro probably mostly just registered and never used, uh, and p possibly never used uh, on the internet, but more in apps or, or in more closed environments. I don't know. I, I really don't know. S I used that as um, just to be, figure out what a reasonable max length for the scheme part in the parser could be. The the um, the original pull request from the person again I don't remember the name. It was a first time contributor. He suggested 256 bytes limit for the URI scheme bounce it from 8 bytes to 256 and fine, uh, I mean 256 wouldn't hurt anyone either but I was just, when I saw that bump I just wanted to base that the number on something sensible so I, I did this little research to get it to to see how, how things lie uh, yeah, that's the, those were the 8, 9, 10 most significant bug fixes, I think. There are others, and of course you may think some other bug fixes are more relevant than these. They're all listed on the in the change changes page on the on the on the website, and the most of them are links to the underlying uh, GitHub issues or GitHub pull request, uh, mostly where the where they start st start off, so you can cut up, catch up on all the details, and get um, get all the info you need. <coughs> so that's seven dot sixty five dot zero. 
I haven't emailed the announcements yet. I haven't tweeted the announcement. I've only posted this blog, as you saw here, and the, I've uploaded the things to so the website is uploaded. So I'm going to send out the emails just after I'm, I'm done with this little uh, release stream. And going forward, then, I, I mentioned a few things here coming up next, what I'm going to do for the next release. First, I don't know if next release is going to be 7.66 or 7.65.1. It depends on what we merge during these first f four weeks, which is the feature window. But I think it's likely that it'll be 7.66 because we have some fun changes in the pipe that I want to merge. So I think it's likely. For example, I want to merge my parallel transfers that I've that I'm working on. Um, it's it's not really completely done and completely 100% sure how, how it works, but I want it. It's still a big change. So I want to land it fairly early so that maybe I can get someone else to help me out to polish, uh, fine tune the details and get more people to test it out before it ships or maybe mark it as some sort of experimental or something. Um, to get it out and get tested so that um, I'm, I'm, I mean I'm sure me sitting with a private branch in my end it won't won't make it good anyway until I get loads and loads of people to try it out and, and uh, find all the problems with it and so, and then you know iterates through the bugs and polish the rough edges <coughs> we're going to uh, yeah, right. We're going to deprecate Polar SSL support, which is really nothing to for anyone because Polar SSL is the former library that is nowadays replaced with embed TLS. So there shouldn't be any users around anymore with Polar SSL. It hasn't been updated for three years, and it's most probably insecure by now, and you shouldn't use it. So. Yeah, uh, removing support for that is really a no, no brainer. <coughs> we'll see about HP three. I'd, I'd like to see that pushed forward a little bit, but uh, uh, at the same time, a bit, um, I've, I've been a bit hard to find time and effort, uh, energy to do that. Hopefully, I get someone to help me out and participate more from from the quick and HTTP three land side. We'll see about that. I have a few other things in the pipe, so just minor fixes. Uh, so, so um, I think it could be some interesting work going forward. And usually, we don't really know. I mean, there are eight weeks now until next release because it's Wednesday today. We'll release the next thing on. Um, well, I have this little. Um, this is the release procedure document here in my Emacs file. So we can see May 22nd is today. That's this release. Next release is scheduled for July 17. That's eight weeks from now. So July 17. Um, yeah, we don't really know what's going to be in there. I, hopefully people are working on cool stuff. We will fix more bugs. We will add n some more features. We will do the parallel transfers probably. So yeah, th it could be some fun things. I could mention that um, since it's obviously not as apparent as it should be that if you go here, it, actually if you look at it on the website it's probably a, a better place, but if you go to, where is it? Um, bup, 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 where might it be? Releases. I thought I was going to find the release procedure. Oh well. If you go to the GitHub and you go to docs here, you can go to the release procedure. GitHub. 
Anyway, I was gonna say that here, if you go here, there is a link to the iCalendar format of the release schedule. So if you, if you click on that, you can add it to your favorite calendar, like Google Calendar or other calendars, and you'll get all these entries visible in your calendar. And actually, uh, not only this date, but actually all dates to the end of time when we will do color releases. And it'll also mention when we have feature freezes for all of these releases. That's the date exactly in between of these releases in, in the typical, typical, typical case. Uh, okay, so that was uh, seven. <laughs> Yeah, according to the release schedule, we have releases to the end of time. I'm, I'm not sure we can deliver on that, but yeah, let's, let's hope. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think I better not sneeze straight into the microphone. Uh, <coughs> uh, okay, so where am I? That's, that's the release. Release, 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 boom. And as you can see at the top of the screen on the site, there's this nagging thing about answering this curl survey. So if you haven't answered, responded to the curl survey, please do that. It'll be up until the end of the week and then it's done. We've had, I think, 550 something people respond, which is awesome, but we, the more the merrier and the better data we get, the more info we get about people people's use of curl and, and what to do next and so on. It's always interesting. And after after we get the response, I mean, after Sunday midnight, I'm going to spend an ungodly amount of time to try to collect that info, gather it, uh, analyze it and put it together in a, in a document and a blog post. And I'll probably make a little video about it to, to sum up what we learn from this survey, what people, how people use curl, what people want from curl, and what we people don't want from curl, and how, what people think about curl as a project and stuff like that. I think it's, uh, I I like that. Well, of course, I would like that, right? It's I, I made a survey, but okay. Um. So now we're going to. If you are subscribed to one of the curl mailing lists or yeah, one of the curl I'm going to make uh, I'm going to email now to the curl users mailing list, to the curl announce mailing list and to the lib curl mailing list called curl library and the mail is fired out now. I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to show you my email program nor do I want to show you my inbox and stuff like that. So I just now fired away the the email about the release. Yay! And here I'm going to email two more uh, emails. First, the first one with subject security advisory curl integer overflows in curl URL set, which is CVE 2019-5435 there and there it is off and then I'm going to um, send away my third email with the subject security advisory curl TFTP receive buffer overflow which is the CVE 2019-5436 and I mentioned both of these security problems before these are the um, security vulnerabilities as um, we've written and uh, used when we registered the CVEs or requested the CVEs, so they are detailed enough for you to understand the problems and the, they link to the fixes. It struck me that I didn't really talk about one of the remedies. Uh, let me let me see here. Did I just skip that or did I forget to mention it? B -b 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 I forgot to mention it. Well, I could mention it now then as a bonus when you, you thought I was done, but I'm not, I'll, I'm never done. Uh, um, <coughs> I merge a fun little thing. Let's click on it. This is the patch I merged. 
So it's really silly little simple thing, but it it's it introduces a limit to the how long strings curl will accept as input to its APIs. It, it sounds ridiculously stupid and possibly very simple, but yes, it, and and it is. So now, using curl easy set opt or curl URL set, you can only pass in a string that is eight megabytes long. So if you try to set a string to any option that is longer than eight megabytes, curl will return an error. It's and it's actually there's an exception for the post fields um, string. Um, so the reason here is eight megabytes is a very long string. Uh, I can't think of anyone having any strings that long. That I mean, on purpose uh, and having and thinking that is a good idea. And the the reason here is that it's not that I don't like long strings. People can have long strings. It's it's not that. It is just that. Um, okay, I got the, the email on the mailing list was received by myself now at least. So now the the announcement email has gone out. So <clears throat> it turns out that so many times we've had this integer overflow problem on 32-bit architectures because we allow any length to be passed in. So yeah, you can set a two gigabyte string on a 32-bit architecture, and then we might make a multiplication, you know, double the length or whatever, and then it wraps around and we, this is a mistake we've done. I think we have maybe four, five, six different security vulnerabilities that are due to this same mistake over and over and over. And I finally grew bored with it and decided that we shouldn't. Now at least we need something much worse than just doubling the size. Now we need to do something really horrible to get that kind of integer overflow starting now. So hopefully now we will have a, put a pretty good a pretty good um, uh, stop for that kind of flaw. Well, not that kind of flaw, but flaws for integer overflow flaws on <laughs> input strings. <laughs> yeah. So so um, one of the bugs that were that we gave out money for this um, integer overflow in curl URL set. That's the the CVE 2019. Uh, what's the number? 54, 35. Uh, this is one of those. If you manage to s pass in a two gigabyte string on a 32-bit architecture, we blah 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 blah, and it well, everything turns bad. You can actually do it with t two different ways in this bug, but no more. And when this person reported it, we had already merged that fix. So this is surely the last time uh, such a, such that particular problem should be a possible. <laughs> we'll see about uh, what other fun things we can have. So. Uh, as I, I said before, the, bound, the bug bounty program has been a raging success so far. A lot of reports, two good ones in the first month only, paid out 350 USD so far in a month. So I'm really happy to be able to pay more. So if you find security problems, report them. And uh, if they're valid and, and actual security problems, we will reward you with money if you, if you want money. And we'll be happy to pay that f for these sort of problems. I could also then mention that the money we are paying for these bugs are purely donated funds. So we're counting on the fact that we have donors donating money to us so that we can spend it on, 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 the, on the bug bounty. I think it's good and I, I hope this will push us forward, it will make curl better and it will make people interested in actually spending some time in finding these problems because we can actually pay them a little bit for their time. I know I know that we're competing with other projects when it comes to P 
people's attention and, and the security researchers time and effort so if they have problem uh, projects they they can get money from and we wouldn't pay money we we don't uh, we don't get their attention as easily as we do now well and we don't pay a lot of money but these are all low rated bugs if you find more severe problems we will pay more money and if you find problems that are really really serious you can get a lot of money there's a maximum th of uh, 32,000 USD for the worst kind of critical bugs but I challenge you I don't think you can find any such bugs but if you do let us know it'd be pretty fun if, if someone found it'd be good to fix it at least not fun in having that kind of flaw because if we had that kind of flaw that flaw was would probably be made by me and that's uh, I don't like it actually <coughs> among the <coughs> sorry <coughs> excuse me uh, well among all these security problems we have 89 now in in the project which I think is a terrible amount uh, 89 but well over quite a lot of time almost all of them were introduced by me almost all of them were also patched by me but still I'm just saying it's uh, it's refreshing to keep in mind that uh, the problems are there all the time <clears throat> okay um so I uh, I fired out the emails the f I saw the first security advisory appear didn't see the second one yet <clears throat> Right, so, so <laughs> I actually thought about it a, a little bit when I uh, when I wrote this blog post about 7.65.0, you know, another release, hey, that's fun, it's cool to, to do fix problems, and you, but it is going to take a long time until a lot of users are actually getting this version of curl in their hands. So the, the long tail of, of upgrades is really, really long when it comes to curl, so yeah. But maybe if, if we would find a really, really horrible security problem, that might, I mean, maybe that would be a good time to actually kick people's butts and get it, them to upgrade slightly faster. But I actually don't think it, it would be like that. I also think that the risk that we have a really severe and serious problem in curl is really, really low. Um, since I mean, I don't have any, any particular good things to back that up, but we've tested things, we've run things, we've been scrutinized, we've reviewed, we've done a lot of it. So, so I think I think it's also why it's easy for us to promise a lot of money for, for high rated security bugs, because we think they are so low risk that they might not exist or them. Well, at least that's, that's my take on it. So yeah, <coughs> of course, It'll take a long time until users, until your car runs this version of curl, it, it'll probably be years off. I think, I think it's interesting when you, one of, one of the good things that people are actually, you know, use, showing off the curl license in their stuff, you know, when they, in the car manual or in the about screen in your uh, games and whatever it's that it shows the copyright year range in the in the license and so it's that's usually a good hint to see how old version they are using it doesn't show the exact version but if you go into your car and you see curl uh, copyright 1998 to 2012 then you know that it's certainly not the latest version of curl but to be fair i think even if even if there's a really really long tail of curl versions in a lot of these cases like in your car or your f maybe not fridge but car at least uh, and games they they actually they rarely use you know any random server they usually made for a particular server a particular setup so the security 
vulnerabilities may not hurt them, right? Since if if you have a control environment where you run your entertainment system in a car and they always connect to your map server and your firmware upgrade server and your music server and whatever it is, me introducing a problem in either a protocol they don't use or or you you need a malicious server to exploit it somehow, maybe that doesn't hurt them that much or, or the risk for them to, is is really low. So. I mean, can't say that for everyone, but in in some cases, of course, they they can be saved by their controlled environment. And uh, yeah, that, and I saw the second advisory pop up in my uh, mailbox as well. So all my three emails have been received on the mailing lists. <coughs> Yeah, curl 7.65.0 takes a little while to get used to that new version number. So uh, remember which one is the new, is the latest one. In my case, I usually I usually just bump it uh, the version number in the in, in Git and get on with working on the next version. I have looking at the if i would go to to git hub git hub i have let's see author that's me seven pending pull requests so out of these first this one is a genuine fix they should probably have landed in this release, but I was too late and didn't do it. It's not, this is another th zone ID fix. Uh, uh, hopefully not too many people are actually using zone IDs and IPv6 addresses. And then I'm fixing, an <laughs> again, a zone ID fix in the proxy string, which is has was a bug reported a while ago. So two immediate bug fixes to land. I'm going to clear up the naming when it comes to WolfSSL in curl and just call it WolfSSL. The, that library was once upon the time called CJASL, C -J -A -S -S -L. but it hasn't been called like that for years and we don't need to refer to the old name anymore anywhere. So I'm removing the old name everywhere and just call it WolfSSL. I'm going to remove support for Polar SSL, as I mentioned before. <coughs> I'm going to introduce support for parallel transfers. What's good with my support for parallel transfers is that um, you need to explicitly enable it to happen. So if you don't enable it, it should work like before. So uh, it might be a pretty good way to if I don't bang on the drums too much, I can just land it and people can just keep on uh, using curl as usual. And those who knows about it and can try it out and see how it works and we can work on one on it in the meantime. I, I, I am in particular not really happy yet with how we report how all the transfers do, right? If you ask for 22 parallel transfers and three of them and with failures, how do you get that reported? How do you get that info back in, in a nice way? So we have something to work on there. I have this follow location problem. I mentioned it before. How make sure with a new bit that basically asks if you redirect to a new location, do not um, use the custom request option on the next request. It's a bit of a stretch and a complicated thing, but custom re the setting a custom request with curl, the one that you do with dash capital X, it makes people do mistakes so often. So I wanted to provide a way to not do that mistake. And I have the quick and HTTP three branch. It's, uh, it's not at all done or complete for anything. So it's still there. It says, uh, work in progress here, and it still is. Yeah, I want to. I want to take that further, but uh, 
I'm not sure I have the uh, time and, and uh, energy for this cycle either. We'll see. Hope, I hope. I hope I'll, I'll get some help with that. More news about that later on. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to... Check out Appveyor failed. Why did Appveyor fail? Uh, one of those regular Appveyor flaky test failures. Let's ignore <laughs> uh, yeah, Sort of, this is a poor situation for our CI builds. So Appveyor is, has a flaky build, but usually it very often just fails one of these. Ignore. And coveralls is a really spotty service basically invents stuff like that coverage decreased by 3.4 percent and no it didn't it just made it up and it can basically go up and down like crazy without anything explaining it <coughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna merge this one But um, um, okay, uh, let me do like this. I'm going to take a little break, do a, 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 a coffee refill, and then I'll do some emerging and bumping version numbers and stuff. I might as well get on to it. First, uh, two minutes coffee break. back coffee <clears throat> S 
so where do I start let me start here proxy so many branches proxy zone ID rebase it and check the Thirty-nine eighteen <coughs> fixes thirty-four eighty-two. Oh right, I can also credit the reporter here. I should. Reported by Edmund U. There. Push. Sorry, <coughs> that was not working. Merge it into master and then push. And then check it out in the browser. It should close it. Closed and delete branch. Blip. More pull requests that I've done. So I, uh, when when the, this zone in zone ID thing in in URLs, you know that percentage twenty five, and it says something after af on a. IPv6 numerical address. When you get that percent ETH, like uh, in, in the Linux case, it says percent 25 ETH zero, like the interface. You use this function to get the an index out of the name. And this name se seems to exist on Windows as well. So I, in here, I've tried to fix the check to work for a cross-compiled Windows build. Build on Linux cross-compiled for Windows and make sure that the check for this function works for Windows too, but apparently it doesn't. So this is not a complete fix, but it it tries to fix it and I think it's along the way and it fixes it for the CMake detection. So I think it's a step forward at least, even if it doesn't go all the way. So I'm going to merge this. Um, that's the uh, branch name. That's that's not the branch name. That's the branch name. So I'm going to check out that branch. <coughs> I'll fix up. I'm going to rebase dash i because I want to squash the tube and then I'm going to update the commit message 3917 yeah and then merge that into master Yes, and push. Then remove my local branch. So many local branches. Remove it on GitHub as well. And then switch to GitHub. Uh, because now we've then merged two of them.
So, okay. Where are we on this? Oh, right. Uh, 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 uh. First, was there some failure? Let's see what it, if it failed somewhere. <laughs> yeah, the Wolf SSL build failed. That's that's good. So what did I do to make that not work? Ha! <coughs> uh, <coughs> I'm used the wrong. So this is obviously not baked enough to merge so I'm going to fix it so let's first head over to this and I'm going to check out the pretty sure that it's called wolf SSL only yes wolf SSL only F first rebase it on master so that I don't have any old Exactly, it's it's a it's a matter of casing. The Wolf SSL library is is called Wolf SSL with a lowercase W, and I apparently apparently did some. Oh, that's also with an uppercase. So I, I I don't know, I don't know why I didn't see this. I wonder if. Uh, I thought I okay. It doesn't matter. I'll I'll um, I'll switch over and use SNI. And um, the other one was get the Yeah, those were two mistakes. But I also got um, another remark from Daniel. Daniel, uh, Daniel. We're a lot of Daniels in the project, that, and that's good. Uh, <coughs> so he f found some other things I had missed. I, <laughs> exactly like that. So he remarked about the capitalization in in the in one of my fixes, and I think he's dead on because, uh, as I said, it should use a lowercase w. data there it is so many options wolf SSL eh? should we reword this one other SSL Should we reword this? Uh, <coughs> well, yeah, well, maybe we should. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that for now, at least. A 
I'm reading I'm reading uh, Daniel's comments here in the other window so yeah uh, <coughs> So, where are we? And I see now that uh, Debian has posted security advisories for the two CVEs that I reported. The, so they were really fast. Um, Stray zero? Where where was the stray zero? It's also pretty good that it's a negative 40 lines to do this. Basically, I, I cleaned out a few options to actually use the CIAS library um, because it doesn't make any sense to use the old one. <coughs> push and let's force push a new build there. And the, uh, the CI builds right now, they're slower than a long time. So they're painfully slow at times. So it'll take a good while until I get some <coughs> feedback on this. But there's no hurry. Author me polar SSL deprecated. Yeah, I can check that out. This should be a fairly straightforward thing. App Veyer again. And I'm just gonna make sure that yeah, one of those flake app veyer ones. <coughs> this is called deprecate polar SSL. So let's head over to here, git check out that branch, rebase it. It looks like this. Also a negative 80 lines or so. Right, because um, this just removes it from configure, so it doesn't actually remove the code. So if you if you really want to, you can still build curl with this code. It just makes it harder. So this is the first step in in removing support completely. The point, the idea here is that we're removing support to build with Polar SSL in the next release. You can still do it if you if you do it manually. You can still build support for it, and it'll be like that for six months and then after six months in this state we will remove it completely i mean assuming that there aren't any you know violent riots uh, asking for a different behavior or different treatment before that which is unlikely so this is just the deprecation uh, method and uh, i think we do it just to make sure that we don't act too fast on these things and let 
give people a, a while to act on and, and notice and respond if there is if there actually is a valid concern or, or um, reason to reconsider this decision we have we have a while to, to do that and we uh, give this time to users to respond but this looks good I'm going to merge into master look it look at it and oh, oops I'm going to add a uh, closes the three three eight 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 and I'm going to push Aha, uh -huh. yeah, I, you're right, but I didn't save it, so I actually just had it in my uh, in my buffer. Thanks. <coughs> and I'm going to delete that branch from my local. Sometimes I run, I run the garbage collect on, on purpose just to get rid of all the... I still have this amount of local branches in my git repo. <coughs> Most of them are branches I forget to delete when I merge them into master, but... I occasionally go through them and, and clean, uh, clean them up. And... okay. I think we're doing pretty good progress here. So uh, this is going to take a while until I I left the review. Uh, okay. Um, so the parallel transfers, how are they? yeah so i can to start with let's rebase rebase is fun no it's not fun parallel transfers here it is i have three and 30 different commits each Yeah, there's a quick interim meeting in London today, so uh, I should stop this stream and switch on another stream and follow the quick fun in London instead. Um, rebase. There it is. <clears throat> okay. to be like that and I think like that oh 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 ah pain <laughs> yeah that's rebase fun right ooga Ooga booga. 
But uh, I think I'm going to just cut it out. I think it's mostly just try to put it back like that. Oh crap. Okay. Git rebase. Continue. Oops. Okay. Will this work? Should work. So I'm going to, <clears throat> what am I going to do? I'm going to merge the parallel transfers branch as soon as it runs through the CI tests green. So I'll, I'll write a separate blog post about it and I probably need to document it even better but and it's I mean it's not really everything isn't done yet but I want to get it in there so that we can continue working on the details git push force the rebased into the parallel transfers and I'm just going to switch over here to see the badoom it's a pretty decent chunk of code it, so this is not a negative code amount <laughs> development but this is all in the tool directory nothing of this is in the lib curl <coughs> so refreshing a lot of things here then uh, how are we on this another crappy um, App your test. So in this branch, this branch, where is this branch? I'm going to rebase this branch. Sometimes I like to do ignore date as well, just because if it's really old, I, it's it gives it a weird impression that I wrote it a long time ago and then rebase it on top of the modern thing. <coughs> do, 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 do. Oh, look at that, we got more. commits coming in. Marcel pushed five commits just now. I think he cleaned up examples. But I can also, yeah, let me just make sure that this builds and I'm going to force push I think I'm I haven't got a lot of feedback on this change, so maybe I'll leave it around a little bit longer. So in this, we got there. Marcel update, yeah, example f improvements. That's lovely. And I wanted to run in over here. First, I tend to do like this go to the release notes 
and just bump a few things because this is now going to appear in the well, this is appearing in the um, git repository so leaving the old things around isn't really gonna make anyone happy So we might have the next one called 765.1 and let's <laughs> let's just call it that for now at least. So if I can check the version number on the current build, it says 7.65.1 dev. The slash dev dash dev is it appends on the version built from Git. So just wanted to make sure that it looks good. And it's usually better to make sure that it shows the, the coming version rather than the just released version. All right. <clears throat> so I forced pushed that one as well. So you started up. So we have um, warming up the CI builds this morning. I have three ones. How about this one? Where are we on this? conflicts so why not rebase that also we don't want conflicts because it it's annoying for everyone who wants to help out so rebase yeah let's ignore date <coughs> Connect. I wonder what did we change. Hope it's not something horrible. Okay. No, this is fine. I think. I think we can basically do if there's transport isn't TCP. I think it's like that. And then we changed this function to make it more depending on features so that we can don't build it. We don't need to build it if the um, TCP stack in question doesn't have the functions. Base continue. Yep. Well. I should just make sure that it's at least builds first. So I, I build with a regular configure. This is not enabling any quick things. The quick backends, uh, they don't actually do anything sensible yet anyway, so I just wanted to make sure that I didn't ruin uh, the regular build. I'm actually pretty k 
keen on merging the initial quick work too, since it doesn't do anything if you don't enable it. So uh, to sort of land the initial architecture for, for quick to get us uh, something easier to build further on. So if I just get this to build fine, I think I'm going to also move move further on on doing that. So force push on the quick branch as well. Bam. Uh, where are we there? Uh, yeah, f force push there. So yeah, now we have all my four pending pull requests are all building. I did already release. So 7.65.0 is on the site. It's up and uh, available. It's signed. It's available for download. It's um, yeah. I'm pretty much done. I all, all yeah, even um, blogged about it already. So if you want to read, if you want to read the details about the release, it's on my blog daniel.hacks.se/blog. 7.65 um, just my take on the release it's all also in the of course on the site so you can also go here and you can watch the change log here and watching the change log is the all the recorded bug well these are the three changes and here are the recorded bug fixes in alphabetical order Lots of URL API changes, as you can see here. I talked about them earlier. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, yeah, so I have this. When I every time I do a release, I uh, I load. <laughs> I actually uh, I've done mistakes so many times when I've done releases. So I have this checklist or this document now that it describes exactly how to do release. Uh, I am the one who, who makes the releases every time. And this is my 181st time I did a curl release. So uh, <coughs> you would imagine that I've done it a few times. I wouldn't do mistakes anymore. But nowadays I don't do mistakes only because I have this list. So I pretty much follow this list every time. And I did this this morning. Edit release notes to be accurate. Update docs, thanks. It contains all the names of all contributors ever to curl. So commit everything, tag everything, run this script to make the, the, the tarballs, push everything to git and push the tags, the tag rather, sign, GPT sign the tarballs. We do actually four tarballs per release, which is just the same source code just converted to different well, compressions and, and uh, so we have this zip file and we have tar gz and we have tar xz and we have tar bzip2 files so just so that you can get whatever flavor you like uh, i'm not sure it matters much but that's just it's it's no work and then upload everything to the primary download directory which is on the website um, so i don't need to do anything other than that and then i need to edit the www repository and I edit the make file, I edit the news log, I edit the changes, I commit all of those to that repository, I tag that and I push everything. And then I don't need to do anything more because the website will then automatically update itself. I can also trigger the update manually. So I, when I release, I tend to do that because I don't want to wait anything just fire it off, make sure that it updates everything. And then I can go to the website and reload it and make sure that it also updates there. What I typically forget, and I didn't forget it this time, is to update the releases on um, GitHub. You know, when you go to GitHub, to the regular uh, repository here, you can go to this releases uh, tab. And you, if you click the releases, it'll list everything. So yeah. 
Here it says 7.65.0, and uh, here are the releases. So you can download the tarballs from here as well. And if you ever do that, pick one of those that I uploaded and not one of these that are generated by GitHub. <laughs> Just because they're not identical. And I uh, and, and added a link, a link here to the back to the changelog on the website if you want to read all the details. So, and when I've updated on GitHub, the document says inform. Send an email to curl users, curl announce, and curl library. And I did. I haven't tweeted about it especially yet because I've been st uh, doing this stream. So, but I will send out tweets about it, probably a link to my blog post, uh, which is the more sort of long windy way of telling talking about the release. And the suitable beverage intake is encouraged. That is coffee so far. And then nothing, and the rest of the document here is just for the regular release schedule, as I mentioned before. The, here are the scheduled release dates for curl for the f coming year. We are most likely going to stick to this agenda, these dates. Um, I, I could do a script for a lot of it, but a lot of them are actually um, manual. They have, most of them are supported by scripts, but they're not all the way done by scripts. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm aware that I can automate a, a little bit more than I do, but they're actually fairly automated. So I do I pretty much go through this list in I don't know, a few minutes. So doing a release, well, that's maybe a stretch, but, but I mean, this morning when I did the release, it, it I don't think it took me 10 minutes uh, even. It's so because this morning I had everything done. So everything was already, you know, I had had my ducks in order already this morning because I've prepared it for a long time. So, um, it takes a lot of manual things anyway, since I've been writing. I have written the, the you know, the change logs and I've kept up, up to date and in sync with the, with the updates since all through the cycle. I've been poking and, and writing the blog post for this for the last week. I, I write, I've written both of the security ad, uh, vulnerability advisories um, and I've written them a while ago. And I also edited the the web uh, website changes, updated stuff uh, with a few days ago. Basically, and just prepared everything for this release date. So <clears throat> I usually am preparing for a release a few days ahead, and then uh, this particular release, I would say, was a little and a little bit unusual in that we. Uh, had bug fixes merged pretty much all the way through. I, I landed bug fixes yesterday, which is unusually close to the release date. And I would say that I recommend it. And I think I'm a, bit, a little bit scared of doing it since I know that when we do that, we usually break something that we didn't have time enough to actually detect. And then when I release something, you know, S soon someone will show up and report the first bug. And this is a fun contest actually. So I released the the time date the, when my email that sent out the release announcements to the mailing list was at 9.23 my time. That is actually exactly one hour, one minute ago. Um, and I haven't seen a single bug report yet. So we're still on one hour in and there's no bug report on 765.0. Of course we have bug report. <laughs> I said, uh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, wait for it. Here it is. So 
so yeah there there me being yeah, a whole hour without a bug but it, no i would say that's almost one hour without a bug report so uh, <laughs> it was two minutes ago so i would say pretty much exactly one hour and then the first um so yeah good times um But OpenSSL is built with no MD4. Isn't all OpenSSL built with no MD4 these days? I have my own OpenSSL build here. I can just, if I, I think it's called, config help, can I? I wonder if I can, uh, yeah, no, okay, if I do it like this, I was convinced it was disabled already, <coughs> already by default, but because it should, right, um, so let's rebuild OpenSSL, my, my uh, own version of it. <coughs> and see what happens. Ha! Okay, it couldn't even build itself. Make clean and then rebuild. I'm not I'm not 100% sure of, of the OpenSSL build liking dash J to make, so I tend to just use it without parallel builds, which makes it a bit slow, but not terribly bad. Um, okay. No MD4. And really, um, I don't. I'm not too bothered about this because if if you use a custom OpenSSL build in that you disable things in OpenSSL specifically, it's really hard for us to make uh, libcrawl, you know, adapt to whatever crazy thing you can tell OpenSSL to do in the particular build. So. Mm it's not a major concern that you can make the <coughs> the build fail when you do custom build options in OpenSSL. I think we should make an effort to make sure that we support it and build w with whatever you told open the OpenSSL build, but still. It complained in this source code curl NTLM, the LM core, and I know Steve was in this and fiddled with MT4. Look, if not def, so it actually checks for it. So it is it is adapted to it, but it obviously isn't good enough. And we have our own MD4 implementation in curl. So if you don't have it in, in OpenSSL, <laughs> you're not saved by that. You'll get it from curl instead. Because if you if you want to have support for NTLM, you need MD4. Um, which is a bit interesting.
Yeah, it's curl md4 it. Here it is, md4.c. Yeah, and TLM is really, uh, I mean, it's so yucky, so it's annoying. But um, what do you do? We have a lot of users uh, still using NTLM, so we have support for it. And okay, it's a really in a fun build output there. So let's uh, hide that. It's just too annoying to see. MD4. Oops, and make install. I think we can do it like that. It's so much faster to just install without documentation. Open SSL git, I think, which is the git, uh, my command line to build with my open SSL I built from git. And now we'll see what it says about that. And I'll just see if uh, enabled OpenSSL and let's build it. And now you can see that it uses the right directory for the custom build I have and uh, bup, bup, bup. a lot of configure output um, so working on the first curl 6 of the saxophone bug yep Bug 3921, if you want to see it in the GitHub. Um, come on, slow thing. What? There it is. Curious. So it doesn't actually build here. I added this error just to see that it didn't, didn't actually reach this. So what's the...
that's one if def and it has an and if if not have open SSL but it should and defined no md4 Let's check the build OpenSSL, include OpenSSL over here. So why doesn't that work? Uh. Wait a minute, it says use OpenSSL and have OpenSSL. But that's not a problem. The problem is this thing that doesn't seem to be good enough. Uh, right, because it doesn't include the file correctly, right? basically like this and I'm pretty sure it won't work for embed TLS either or all the other ones oh, maybe I should remove my crap Okay. Okay, so I had the first bug after one hour and now have the first bug fix after one hour and uh, 15 minutes. Actually, the bug was filed 16 minutes ago and I have a bug fix. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's decent. Uh, open SSL no MD4 master MD4 build correctly with open SSL without MD4. Fix is 3921 reported by reported by who was it it was
Elsemuko at GitHub. I'm clearly this won't work uh, with embed TLS either. the fix and um, okay just to show off I'll push it first with the fix to to the that actually fixes the open SSL build and then I'm going to work on see if I can do it with embed TLS Oh, you're not seeing this. I'm doing this. Boom. Um, where am I? Here. So Sorry, let's go back. I, I better work in that branch. I'm going to. I have another. Let's see. This builds with embed TLS from <coughs> from the from Debian. <coughs> And I'm not sure exactly what configuration it uses, if it allow, if it has MD4 or not. So I'll just build it first and see what happens. Embed TLS, it says there. So that's good at least. Look at that. It's deprecated. But okay. That's fair enough. But it meant that it actually had MD4 support. Config. Enable the MD4 hash algorithm, yeah, so it has it enabled, but we don't include it. So I will do like this if def use embed, then we're going to include embed tls config.h. Just gonna make sure that it actually doesn't break anything, and then add that to seven sixty five dot one with embed TLS two sixteen dot zero. It works. Well, it builds.
Boom. So I'll just amend that so it'll appear there. Okay, dokie. Okay. Um, first bug, first bug fix. Yeah, I, w I was gonna say something about it. It's, it's a cool uh, sort of re uh, relief or or a, or a fine period Ex immediately after the release, sort of before the first bug has been filed. It's it's a good feeling to just say that ah, it's out there. It's a fresh new and but okay. It took almost exactly one hour from the release email until the first bug report was filed oh and by the way look at the um, the number of forks only 40 forks left until 3000 forks and uh, not that it matters but it's an even number uh, okay I'm going to um, what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, put a stop to this stream I've been going for uh, for a while, well, presume I would counter somewhere. Yeah, two hours and seventeen minutes. Mm. I'm going to take off. So, have fun, curl safely, and uh, uh, good of you to stop by this release. I. Uh, Hope it's going to be a good release. We have a bunch of things to go going forward. There will be more bug fixes and we'll have more fun. So um, see you later. <laughs>